Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it's actually the morning as well. No after morning, mm -hmm. no morning-ish. Good actual morning. And you know what? It's actually 10 a.m.-ish. 10 a.m.-ish. Nice. We're still within the 10. That's after the countdown and everything. Not None, none of this, we went live at 10.59. It's still five minutes <laughs> left of the 10 hour, and we're like, what? And what? What? Anyway, how are we all doing? Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. My name is Graham Day. I'm joined by the man that we call... Bibby. Hello. So how are we? Well, 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 well. I feel like I'm not... Well, I'm not actually sat in the middle. Yeah, um, I'm just going to... I was thinking yeah. that. I, I looked up at you then for a second, and you were like over to one side, and then my mic's over at the other side. It looks like it's. And now introducing our special <laughs> guest. <laughs> Ta -da! Um, but yeah, I'm just so used to this being. A, it's, it's very much the Ant and Deck situation. Do you know what I mean? You always get one on one side. It, it'll be weird if I started sitting on that side. So naturally, when I come in and I come to set everything up, and you're not here, I'll just revert to sitting here. I do have to realize that when I'm looking down the lens of the camera, the camera is fucking miles away from me, facing this all of this part, which I am now in the middle. Well, my face is in the middle. So I'm just trying to line myself up without having to move all the microphones and stuff, which I did put back yesterday. Although you mentioned the Ant and Deck thing, isn't it? I mean, I'm going to have to jump into the split screen right now to check. I'm pretty sure we have an anti Ant and Deck thing. I mean, it says Bibby's home, and I'll fix that in a second. But yeah, so when I'm in the studio, I sit on the, uh, as you're looking at right, it, right. On, on the left. Bibby's right hand side, yeah. but the left on the screen. But when we're at home, I'm on the right. So we need we need to get some sort of consistency there. I need to eventually, like, See, the reason it's not changed, someone mentioned it about a year ago, and they were like, you should swap it around. I was like, yeah, whatever. And the reason not is because the overlays are designed. So I need to go to the designers and go, I know I'm being a bit of a picky dick, but can you just move my bit over there and Bibby's bit over here? Cheers, mate. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's the reason why it hasn't. But there you go. Hey, hi, hi, hi. hi. But a welcome back. Hi. Uh, Bloody Nora, it is nearly actually 10 a.m. I know, imagine, imagine. Welcome in, Tank. Welcome in, Lake, who was uh, in Super Early Sim way too close to 10 a.m. Close the stream now. Uh, no, we <laughs> we are fine. We are not being held on stream against our will, and everything <laughs> is okay. <laughs> nice. Not uh, that we don't have work stuff to do in the next 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. So we will have to fly through the stuff on this stream. The reason we are putting the scoop out at the normal time is because we have some calls and stuff coming up which will probably lead to busy afternoon stuff um so we basically uh, it was a case of we have to get the scoop out actually on time or not at mm -hmm. all today probably so that's the reason we are live you know on time imagine that imagine that anyway if you don't know who we are as mentioned my name is graham this is Bib. we are ice cream uploads and in true ice cream fashion this is the scoop the uk's number one video game podcast if we do say so ourselves yeah Nice. Anyway, we are live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads where we go live each and every single weekday bringing you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games. We'll give you our thoughts and impressions. We want to hear your thoughts and impressions and then your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's kind of how the whole thing works. So if you're in the stream, please do feel free to get involved. And it's important that you do because we are live on Twitch where we go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. ish. Today is proof that we do go live at 10 a.m. <laughs> Occasionally. Well, I mean, we are getting towards the end of the year now, so this is probably the third time I think we've gone live. <laughs> so no. we're making the asterisk before the end of the year. Fantastic. <laughs> nice. Uh, so we are live on Twitch, but the live stream is turned into a podcast, the video on YouTube, and an audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. There is lots of places where over 165 thousand people have watched and listened to this podcast on demand so please do feel free to get involved on behalf of those beautiful people before we jump into anything a reminder that the loot drop takes place on the first monday of the month so anyone that is a sub to our channel if you're watching this on twitch thinking do you know what i've got prime not using it didn't know we're gonna throw it down i might have thrown it down on bits and you know just get some of the bits and emotes on the go well do you know what screw bits and that was okay. it's good people we're like really uh but uh My if you oh, oh. you mention it and his Which name baby. is Optimus Prime. Sheep Fragger dropping in with his nine months prime. We got the baby. Yeah, baby. Thank you very much, Fragger. Uh, see, we actually engineered that before the stream. I messaged Fra uh, Fragger and said, you know that prime you've got? Don't throw it down on Bateson. Throw it down on us. And he was like, I was just about to put it on Bateson. So there you go. Nice. No, that's not what happened. But thank you very much, Fragger. I appreciate that. Uh, shout out to Fragger as well. We did raid him the other day. He was, uh, was it yesterday? 
It was yesterday because I did what I had him. I had his stream open for the rest of the day, and yeah. then proceeded to not really say anything in his stream at all uh, because it was a busy old day. So nice. Can oh, David. I win this time instead of beans? <laughs> Can I win this time instead of beans? You have to ask Beans that. Beans <laughs> needs to approve it. I can't approve Beans's <laughs> subscription uh, to the giveaway. So, well, yeah, whatever you know. What I'm saying. Um, yes, check out Fragger. Uh, Fragger, I don't know what. What your what your plans are for later on today? Um, I know you've probably got people that you usually jump in games and stuff with anyway. But later on, we're not. Me and Lotus will sort out what we are gonna play today. Um, it could be some PUBG. It could be some um, Warzone. And if it is Warzone, Nietzsche isn't around, so we have a big golf shaped hole in our lineup. No doubt you've probably got people that you're playing with as well. But 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 yeah, just saying because if you're around and things line up, then maybe maybe there's My opportunities. Name is Optimus Prime. His name is Optimus Prime. Insert hype here. Insert hype here. Nice one. Tito dropping down his 20 months after David did his 13 months. Which combined with Sheep Fragger's nine month prime baby means that we have a hype train on the go. Let's go! If anyone else has a hype, hype uh, as a prime that they want to throw down, I'm going to check if I've got one. I think I did mine the other, other day, though, so I'm pretty sure mine's not ready to go. Uh, quick check, quick check. Can I, can I subscribe to me? Or have, am I already subscribed to me? Manage your sub. No, I'm already subbed. Oh, wait, no, wait. It's my 42 month. I mustn't have done it. My name is Optimus Yay! Prime. Yay! Let's go me! <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, 100% just drop me a message. I'll get Nietzsche to text me. Nice. I will do. Yeah. I will do. Uh, for anyone else that isn't aware, on a Wednesday evening, we usually play PUBG. Um, so we'll probably be playing some PUBG tonight, uh, maybe some Warzone, or maybe just one or the other. Uh, so do feel free to join us from around 6.30 tonight. Myself and the Trigger Meister, that exclamation mark Lotus, will be playing games tonight. I imagine Lotus will be streaming, because he sent me a picture of his setup yesterday. He's had some upgrades. I'm not going to say what they are, because he might want to show that stuff and talk about it himself, but it's looking good. So I imagine he's probably going to be streaming as well. So exclamation mark Lotus to find his link. Anyway, as mentioned, we are here to talk about video game stuff. We do have the loot drop coming, which just started a, a whole host of primes. We've had four subs since this. We should we should tell people to sub to the channel. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as well as that, don't forget our sponsors! Exclamation mark Astro. If you're looking to buy yourself a headset, you can save ten percent and support our content. Exclamation mark GT Omega. If you want a comfy chair, you can get that and support our content. Uh, so do feel free check out Astro GT Omega or even in exclamation mark insert coin if you're after some new clothing for Christmas. Do feel free to yeah help yourself to it all. I mean, if you want to see any of that stuff, here's my Astro headset. Here's my GT Omega chair, and here is an insert coin clothing hoodie. I mean, I'm an absolute walking partnership sponsorship guy. Let's go, baby. Nice. Um, has he got a ceiling mounted triple Samsung Odyssey G7 uh, set up with a wheel and bucket seat? Uh, that's no, it's actually a, it's a quad monitor set up. Uh, but yeah, bucket hat. yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, I need to sort this out because it still says Baby's home. I mean, if anyone drops into the stream, you're like, fucking hell, Baby's got a diamond set up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Thanks for your subs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, there he is, back in the studio, so weird. Um, he doesn't have the viewers for that setup. So. <laughs> Very fair. Nice. Uh, anyway, do you know what? If you don't have the viewers for a setup, it's fine, because you don't need anything to set uh, to stream these days. You can stream off a mobile phone-ish, mm kind of. That's a cheesy tangent into the start. Oh, we're reconnected already. Oh. Oh. I, am on, I, am on, I am on the wired internet. It's our read. Can you hear me, Bib? Nope. We've lost the Bib. My internet killed it all. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, it's back. Ish, ish, ish. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Nice, nice. Just making sure, because I lost you for a second then. Yeah, all right. All dropped out. Don't usually lose the Discord call, so the internet no. most of us shit, uh, shit a brick today. Usually, I I'm in streamer mode, so I couldn't even. I didn't even hear the da dun. Yeah, I don't hear any of that stuff. Um, back. Have you thought about going with Virgin? Is uh, is is called Bibby. Please refer him. Uh, refer to him by his normal name. And I usually stream with him when I'm in that studio on a Tuesday and <laughs> a Thursday. Is that what you meant? No. <laughs> um, 
I, answer that question. No, uh, I have. Yes, but but there is no benefit to it. It'll be the same speeds and stuff. So, uh, I know you said it would be a short stream, but come on. Yeah, the worst thing is as well <laughs> is I was just talking about gaming streaming being held back, <laughs> and then Ooh. the stream went down. Ah oh, no. Uh, mobile gaming held back by Apple and uh, Sky. Yeah, clearly. Not Google. Not Google. Well, that is the first story. We'll talk about that first. We'll jump then into Sony removing shovelware and easy platinum games from the PlayStation Store. So if you think, if you're one of these people that chases platinums on your account, um, then there are some games that will literally cost you a couple of quid and within seconds you've got a platinum trophy for it. Um, but now, Despite people being complaining about that for years, PlayStation are getting rid of that stuff. Is it because they've got the PlayStation Stars program and all of a sudden that stuff is useful to PlayStation? Um, so they've gone, ah, do you know what? Let's get rid of it now. But when, even though people, when it actually was for the users, it wasn't a problem. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. We'll talk about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, we'll talk about um, Saints Row's update bringing 200 bug fixes and... If you're a fan of the big old Xbox Duke controller, well, it was remade by a company. That company is now also bringing back another classic Xbox controller. Yeah. But we'll jump into that as we get to it. For now, this is the first story that potentially might work. The last time I tried to speak about it, the internet went down. We will see. We will see if we are censored or not. But Tom Phillips at Eurogamer says, Smartphone game streaming held back by restrictions from Apple and Google, the UK authorities says. Uh, thank you, everyone. That, by the way, that that includes me. Uh, that got into the uh, the uh, hype train. Then it's it's done. It's done. It's nice. We can we can ignore that and we can focus back on the news. Viv, good morning. Um, such cynicism for one so young. I'm sure the trophies have been removed for the players. Yeah, exactly. Tito, we'll jump on that in a sec. For now, though, uh, the CMA launches an in-depth probe after industry complaints. So the title once again: Smartphone game streaming held back by restrictions from Apple and Google. A UK authority says. Um, I've just read the title. No doubt it's going to be repeated twice in the first paragraph because that's how this usually works. But let's go anyway. The UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, has today decided to launch an in-depth investigation into Apple and Google, looking at the restrictions set by each company that affect access to smartphone cloud gaming. Uh, the move follows an earlier proposal to investigate the two companies' market power and a year-long study of the iPhone and Android ecosystems that proved that iPhone is the goat and Android is for pussios. Uh, that report... Oh, no, I didn't say that bit. Sorry. No, that was just me adding a bit sound because... You know, Pussio. Uh, Pussio. Uh, sorry. Uh, that report published in June <laughs> determined Apple and Google held an effective duopoly over smartphone markets, allowing them to exercise a stranglehold, that's a quote by the way, over mobile operating systems, app stores, and web browsers. Further work by the CMA included consultations with unnamed, quote, cloud gaming service providers. Um, I mean, we're not going to name any names, but it sounds like Schmanvidia, and it sounds like Schmexbox Cloud Gaming. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say that in the article, by the way. That's what you said. <laughs> yes, it does. Don't listen to him. He's a full-blown liar. Uh, as well uh, as web developers and browser makers, who said Apple and Google's approach was, quote, harming their business, holding back innovation, and adding unnecessary costs, end quote. These concerns will be investigated further as part of a far-reaching Phase 2 CMA investigation. Uh, the CMA's investigation will be worth what? Watching as it may weigh in on issues already highlighted by cloud gaming companies such as Microsoft and Nvidia, which ironically are the two companies I've just named and didn't even realize they were in the next paragraph. <laughs> Told you! Uh, which have been unable to launch their own cloud gaming services on smartphones via dedicated apps. In the past, both companies have clashed with smartphone makers and Apple in particular over plans to make the Xbox Game Pass and Nvidia GeForce catalogs available on mobile devices. Apple has always said such moves circumvent its own app store. And it's got something else in brackets that I'm going to paraphrase here. And their ability to take that money off you bitches. Anyway, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Because it then starts going to all of the Fortnite stuff, which we covered all of last year. Yes. But the CMA has launched a probe into uh, Apple and Google. <laughs> Use the word probe. Nice. Um because they are basically making it difficult for companies to allow you to access cloud streaming, game streaming, content streaming through their devices. All in the uh, the uh, the risk for success, aka profits. Is that surprising mm -hmm. to you, babe? What are your thoughts? It's not surprising to me because why the, 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 they don't want the competition on the same platform as them, do they? Like, I mean, we, we've had it recently where. Nintendo, there was, there was rumours that Game Pass was going to be coming over to a Nintendo Switch console, which 
would be absolutely amazing. But at the same time, Nintendo surely must be looking and going, the people are going to be playing Xbox games on our Nintendo console. Would this jeopardize our sales in first party games? I, we, we know it won't. That'll never be the case. But why give them the option? So that's essentially what this all comes down to. They don't really want anybody else's manufactured apps to be able to play games that they won't be able to make any money off because how will how will android be able to take money from this if xbox game pass i mean the, the game pass is on there nvidia geforce is on your android device it's just ios that doesn't seem to have those i think it does have the ability to be able to play game pass games i don't have an i don't have an ios phone um or ios platform to be able to go in and check but i'm assuming that they have all of this stuff on there but they're just not able to make any money off of it so they restrict you in certain instances where like the fortnite situation they aren't making any money off of it when you go to the store and you purchase uh v books so you're not being on this you're not being on this platform we'll just delist you it's not a problem for us until it is because they end up realizing actually shit we was making a lot of money with them being on this platform um so yeah I, i'm interested to see what the alternative with this is because we have got things like the logitech cloud now which is literally a designated uh game pass machine um you've there's got the Nvidia one as well there's a razor one yeah Out on my tv in my front room the lg tv i did have google stadia on it obviously that's been uh removed next uh not next month month after in january i think it's january 18th that just, that, that ends up getting removed from everything um but i also have nvidia geforce now which i did actually try but then i realized that my tv was on the wrong frequency so since my update my uh internet was updated at home i have two frequencies i have a five gigahertz and a 2.4 it, for some reason, I'd linked up to the 2.4, so it wasn't running very well. Because that's max, I think it's capped at like 40 uh, download and like 10 upload. But then when I go to the 5 gigahertz one, it's like uncapped, the 300 download, like 100 upload is fantastic. It runs perfectly on that. So having that stuff in built into your system uh, and not being directly open source, because if that was the case, I might have been able to put like my PlayStation Remote Play on stuff like that on there, which isn't available on the marketplace. Like, However, how are these companies meant to be making money through this? They don't want the competition, ideally, on that platform. You'd, you'd have things like, you say, uh, the Razer um, peripheral coming through and the Logitech Cloud, where they had designated tools to be able to, to play these games. That's the reason why the backbone was created, so you're able to play your PlayStation games on the move. That's why the Razer Keisha controllers was invented to be able to play uh, games, uh, mobile games specifically on iOS or specifically on Android, depending on which one you picked up. It's, the e it's their way of being able to make money across the board. And why would they want to cannibalize their own profits, allowing other things on there? The thing is, is like... <laughs> Apple, we all kind of are aware. They just like the they like the money. They like to take the paper, and they they're not afraid of going. Oh yeah, we we love to look after our customers, but they ne it's never like oh our customers first. I mean, they kind of probably do say that some somewhere, but we all know Apple wants their customers to be looked after by a quality system after yeah. they've paid over the odds, which then lines their pockets. Once you're in their yeah. system. It's great. It's wonderful. It all works. It's fine. And it's probably going to work forever until Apple decides that they want to kill your battery and make you buy a new phone to keep in that system. But still, <laughs> that falls into the same thing. They like to get paid for it. Um, did that actually... Did that, that, that got proved, right? Yeah. Um, they, they were... They had to have an excuse for it, and their excuse was that this they they weren't intentionally slowing things down. They were um, trying to stop the batteries being wasted. Uh, so it was <laughs> so some... we just fucking put a load of bloatware shit on that to fail you to slow your system down so much that you think shit, my phone's slow now. I need to go out and buy a new one. Yeah, it was it, it was it was it was almost like saying, oh, we didn't slow it down and make it turn off. What we did was we didn't want it to be sped up. And and empty out, so, mate. You're saying the same thing. You're just saying it from a different. You're a fucking yeah. politician. Uh, yeah. We didn't mean to pop the tires on your car to slow you down, but you know, we, we, we just want wanted some somewhere to. Your tires. No, we just wanted somewhere to place our knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, I mean, Apple. It doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. The one that I do find surprising here is Google. The fact that this actually is something that's applicable to Google and Android services because Epic. And Google were the ones that went after Apple and their monopolization and control of the markets. Uh, um, so yeah, it, it is interesting to see that that well, it's not interesting. It's what we, it's, it's exactly what we said last year 
Businesses look out for your best interests when your best interests are their best interests. And Google were like, yep, we absolutely want to get rid of this monopoly and this 30% share, and we want everything to be open. Just don't look at our stuff yet, as long as we're just talking about yeah. Apple now. Keep your eyes on Apple, and that's fine. But don't, no, we're not, no, we didn't say apply it to us. We, we said do as I say, not as, as we do. We, what are you doing? This is about someone else, not us. Yeah. So, yeah. She tells us. I mean, I, I feel like. We, we've had this conversation before. We'll, we'll, we'll start yeah. to put a pin in this. We've gone over it quite a few times. Things like Apple and Google. Some people will be like, well, it's their system. Apple made the App Store. Yes, they did. But there, there has always been protections across any industry uh, which pre uh, prevents malicious monopolization. If an industry creates something so significant that it changes the way of life, then that has to be regulated in a different way. And that happens throughout any industry. And and the App Store has become so huge and successful that basically Apple have all the money that they will ever need. But they now control how much money everyone else can make. Um, so yeah. it, it needs some form of regulation in there. Well, but people going, well, it's their business. They can do what they want. Just don't put your app on the App Store. Well, then it won't be. There is no option for success. If that is the only option for success... Uh, obviously Google in there as well, then then there has to be some form of regulation to protect people. Because if yeah. not, it's what they call antitrust. Um, and yeah, they are at that level, which is stopping things like NVIDIA GeForce, like Razer Kishi, uh, like the Logitech Cloud device, all of these devices that are meant to assist other platforms so you've yeah. got other platforms and hardware peripheral creators that can't succeed because one other platform's going, actually, we're not earning off that. So, no, thank you. That's what it comes down to, though, doesn't it? It comes down to profit margins because it's not a problem until you think that you're owed more. That's what it comes down to. That's what Fortnite, that's what it came down to with Fortnite. Like, Fortnite were making money hand over fist with iOS. And the thing, Apple are just hosting this and they're taking 20% off the top. This, this, this isn't right. We're the ones that are developing the app. We're the ones that are developing the game. We're the ones that are making thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people wanting to log in every single day yet they're the ones that host it and think that they, they're entitled to a bigger piece of the pie which ultimately if it wasn't an ios at all they wouldn't have made anything so it's sometimes i find it difficult to be able to find the middle ground with this because i do think the opportunity is there for apps to be able to be on a marketplace and for people to be able to play it they're the ones that are giving them that ground in the first place but ultimately it's it all comes down to it all comes down to money. Like no one is complaining about an app that if there's no integrational money taking place. Like if there's no transactional thing within the game itself. If you're playing a fat a flat fee of seven pound for a game and there's no way of them being able to make money, I don't think that these apps are going mental about it. But when it comes down to a subscription service or a microtransaction service and there is money being pumped through left, right, and centre, I think that's when people or execs or shareholders start to go hold on a second we've just made 100 million but 20 of that's just been taken away why oh it's because they're on that platform why is that the case why have we not been able to broker a better deal that's i think that's where it starts to the road starts to become a little bit split the as to is, what people actually want from it yeah I mean, the, the thing is like like using apple as an example the same thing will apply to google too um I mean, Iceman says, particularly hypocritical of Google, given that until recently they were in the game streaming business, 100%. But I feel dramatically. There's, there's so many different avenues. It's like, if you don't put your game on the App Store, um, then you can't have it on that platform. Uh, so you put it on that platform, and then you create a different revenue stream so that you can subscribe through, through the App Store, excuse me, or you can subscribe elsewhere for cheaper. All right, that's fine. Um, but if you try to make that subscription and payment stuff accessible through the mobile phone, so it, say if I want to buy some on, if I want to buy the Battle Pass on Fortnite, was the example that uh, that was happening last year. You can get it on your phone, but Apple take thirty percent off that for Epic. So Epic made it so that you can buy it through the through the web, but doing that through the web on your phone was banned. You could do it through the web on your PC. You could do it through your console. So you can actively buy this elsewhere it doesn't have to come through the phone but if you do it through payment on the phone you're not allowed to do it um despite the fact that you've got 
Amazon, which allows you to pay for anything on uh, through the web on your phone or through the app. But because it's a game and it's an in-app purchase and they, they want to take some of that off it, no, you can't do yeah. that. And and it's just, it's it's unnecessarily regulation and it's stifling creativity, 100% does. Um, but then you also get the knock-on effects that if you aren't on the App Store, uh, yeah, all right, if you're Fortnite, you're probably going to be okay when it comes to promotion. But if you just make mobile apps... Um, yeah. You have to strike a deal then with Apple or something saying, okay, feature me on the App Store because that's the only way I get exposure. So I have to give you exclusive access to my game. So this is the only place that I can have this game for six months, 12 months, forever. Um, but because this is the only place, you are basically bent over backwards. Okay, I could I can do what I want as Apple. I'm taking 30% off you. Yeah, but I'm giving you exclusive access for 12 months. Yeah. But if I don't, you'll die. So I'm taking thirty percent off you anyway. And it's it's such a such an it's such a horrible environment in so yeah. many situations, uh, circumstances. So the fact that yeah. these restrictions are in there, it's already a rigged system. It's already a rigged game. There is no way for any other people to succeed. So I do yeah. I, I do love the fact that the CMA is looking into this. Sorry, what are you saying? I think David might be able to give us uh, give me a bit more clarification on this, but I know on iOS that you're not allowed to sideload apps. It's just not a thing unless you jailbreak it, which I don't, I don't, I haven't heard anyone jailbreak an iOS device since the iPod Touch back in like 2012. I don't even know if that's still a thing anymore. Um, but on Google phones, at least, um, you can download an APK, which is something that's off the off the radar. It's not on the Play Store. So if I wanted to go ahead and download, I don't know, FIFA 15 APK. Um, the the mobile game from 2015. I'm able to just find the APK, download it, upload, uh, and then be able to play that game no problems. It doesn't even touch the Play Store. Therefore, I think, I think you get away from their system. So even if even if that game was still alive and the servers was running, because I didn't download it and install it via the Play Store, that money would then go directly to EA EA Sports. I don't know if that's the case, and that's obviously something that I think David might be able to give me a bit more I think uh, that insight was, into. I think that was something that Fortnite was trying to do. So they, they made it available to get Fortnite outside of the... Uh, the existing ecosystems and stuff. Um, uh, let me jump into the chat and catch up. Hey, it's kid. Welcome into the chat for the first time. Cell phones are just touching hey. computers now and should be treated as such. We should be able to do whatever we like with our own hardware. I agree. I agree mm -hmm. uh, in that sense. Don't get me wrong. I do think there is benefits for systems like iOS and the whole Apple ecosystem. For someone that uses it professionally for me, so I have my own accounts, but then there there is business content from the business that I work with and our clients and stuff on their social media accounts and stuff like that. Working within a locked ecosystem offers me benefits. So like in that sort of stuff, it's great. It works wonderful. Yay. But then like if you want to get even close to the edge of that system, like actually I'd like that, but I want to pay for it directly so I don't pay you 30%. Oh, actually, do you know all the good stuff? Yeah, that can get to fuck. That's when it becomes yeah. shit. So I do agree. I do agree that um, like adding alternate systems or programs and so on, like PCs, you can like was wasn't that something that Windows were made uh, to stop people from being able? Uh, what was it? So you get a PC that has Windows on it. Microsoft wanted to lock it to that way, but then weren't wasn't that something like fifteen years ago where they were ban from banning people to allow like a linux operating system alongside the, or something like that they were actively putting things in place to stop that which was antitrust a mobile device probably has been getting away with that like you, like i bet they can't force apple to allow you to put android on it as a second os because there technically isn't enough function there to do it but as smartphones become more powerful stronger more storage capacity and Smarter. so on, uh, yeah exactly um, <laughs> then at that point i wouldn't be surprised if those laws do start to trickle into mobile phones uh, yeah great you've got an, uh, an, an ios phone well you should be able to sideload android onto it as, as, it, as a second os kind of thing yeah i wouldn't be surprised if we do get to that point of that um mm. david says at least so far google hasn't purposely made new devices run so fast out of the box to claim it's the fastest in the market so it damages the battery cutting its operational life uh 
Or is that is that what Apple does? <laughs> Never touch side loading opens you up to potential malware and malicious apps. It does, it does, and that's mm. that's what I'm talking about, like having a contained ecosystem versus side loading. That said, side loading, if you know what you're doing and you can trust the legitimate sources, um, yeah, then it's then it is a great option. So it's just the same thing with that. You you do open yourself up because you are operating outside of a security net, um, but if you get your content from within another security net you kind of find so i mean i don't do that with any way shape or form because i don't i don't have enough time to invest or care enough to invest to make sure that my sources and stuff would be legitimate so i'd potentially be worried all the time so i just don't bother with it but I'd, i know a lot of people that that tinker with that sort of stuff that know what they're doing and could tell you in in and out what you're doing um with ios you would have to jailbreak it and you can add more apps uh as well as side loading uh, to android um yeah yeah and you know we'll, we'll we'll put a pin in this one for now um so for anyone that wondered if iPhones or Android phones are better the gist of it is they all suck but they're butt tax no no but basically the, the the providers funnily enough big business is out for big profits first imagine that no way imagine that I know, I know. Uh, do you know what? A complete, I know. I know. a complete change of conversation about money being uh, big business and big money being just about themselves. Let's talk about Sony PlayStation. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh Colton at the Gamer um, says, "I mean, I am wearing a PlayStation hoodie at the moment. I know there is a touch of irony in that, but let's go." Uh, so Josh Colson at the Gamer says, "Sony will remove shovelware and easy platinum games from the PlayStation Store. No more padding your platinum collection." Uh, for a lot of people, gaming is all about trophy hunting. Oh, look, we've got um, Amaranth fighting on screen. I swear the gamer love a good Amaranth ad placement. I mean, yikes. Uh, that might have just become a little bit harder to do on PlayStation Store. As Sony inform uh, has informed developers, it will be implementing stricter guidelines. Do you know what? Fuck, she's distracted me. Uh, stricter guidelines. <laughs> just fucking dancing away with a chicken mask on after farting into a jar. What the fuck? Uh... <laughs> Uh, why did we get to oh yeah that might just become harder to do on the PlayStation as Sony is an informed developers it will be implementing stricter guidelines when it comes to cracking down on shovelware and games that appear to have little more to offer than an easy platinum a document reportedly sent by Dex.exe by anonymous source uh, sent to Dex.exe by an anonymous source has been sent to developers informing them of the nude guidelines and actions that will be taken should they be broken quote when partners oversaturate or spam PlayStation Store with many various of the same type of content, it can negative impact, uh, negatively impact both the customer and partner experience. The letter reads, PlayStation then lists what will be considered spam or repetitive content moving forward. Among products that will now fit the definition are games that are copied and not meaning, uh, meaningfully different from pre-existing games on the PS Store, and multiple concepts that have duplicative functionality that, uh, functionality that only have minor variants of assets. Fuck me, a lot of words to say similar games. Uh, PlayStation, okay, fine. As for what new... Fine. Do you know what? We'll leave it there. There's a lot of words there from PlayStation that's just... They're getting rid of the ability to have easy platinums on, mm -hmm. on the store. That has been something that has been there for a long, long time. And I, I'm not a platinum, platinum hunter. I have two platinum trophies. Um, well, I know. I've only got one platinum trophy. I've only got one platinum trophy now because my other platinum I've put away for safekeeping. I can't remember which draw it is. I'll come back to it in a bit. It's basically it's the one that Ben 3D printed me. But I have yeah. PUBG as a platinum, and then I have the one that was provided from uh, by Ben at NGB, uh, which is a 3D yeah. printed, uh, printed platinum trophy. Other than that, I'm not asked. But I do listen to the Kind of Funny Games podcast, and Greg Miller is a big platinum chaser. And he was talking about a few months ago, there are some games out there that will cost like three, four, five, six, seven quid, something like that. Um, and it will take you about 15 minutes to get the Platinum Trophy, maybe even 15 seconds, and the games are, literally, you are paying for a Platinum Trophy, but trophy hunters out there want to see, want to be seen to have the most trophies in the world, so they just keep spending the money on these things, and that's been a long-term problem for a long period of time. PlayStation didn't care, oh, we're making money off this, whatever, eight quid, whatever, we'll take our 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever it is, um... But now PlayStation have revealed PlayStation Stars, which rewards you for your loyalty based on the number of games you own and the number of trophies that you have, which if you've just bought a game that has trophies, that's double whammy. So now all of a sudden it's a problem. Hmm. Yep. I wonder why that is. Thoughts, babe? Yeah, the, the shovelware shit has always been an absolute monstrosity when it comes to 
any 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 platform go onto steam the the entire steam catalog barring about five percent of it is just like there has just been no kind of quality control the switch is getting like that if it's not already at critical mass any platform that you play video games on the mobile the mobile fucking hell mobile marketplace again that is 99 percent shit there's only new star soccer and football manager that's worth playing on there i'm telling you um score hero but it, uh, score hero that's obviously that was a good one what was the score score hero manager as well was that another one it could be. I have only ever played squad. A new star manager. That was oh, cool. New star soccer, new star. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the, there's just so much shit on there. But the, the, if there's an incentive to get a platinum trophy, and like I say, with the PlayStation stars on there, double whammy. Like this is a, there was an absolute no brainer for these people to go ahead and spend three hundred quid on getting forty platinum trophies to then start leveling up for your PlayStation. Then you get five pound off your next game and £10 off your next game or put into a raffle to be able to win a PlayStation 5. Like, all of these incentives for them to be able to go in and buy these dog shit shovelware games that give you a platinum trophy, it was all there. And like I say, now it's affecting the bottom line, not necessarily the, the one or two pound that they was making from the game being sold in the first place is definitely outweighing what they potentially may end up having to give away via the PlayStation Stars um, membership thing. It, it Yeah. Campaign? Stuff. Stuff, PlayStation Stars membership campaign thing stuff. That's what it's called. Yeah. Just in case anyone wondered, that's the official name, full name. Uh, no, name. It's, and it's 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 tragic. It's tragic because you know every company, be it PlayStation, be it Apple, be it Google, be it Xbox, be it any big company in video games, their priority is to make profit. Being able to make profit allows them to look after you. As a gamer, if they're making all the money in the world, they will look after you forever. If that money starts to dry up and the shareholders are not very happy, they don't really care about you as much. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, we still will if our needs are aligned. It's the same thing with anything, straight up business. But it's when it's so blatantly obvious and it's, yeah. it's, it's the, it's the uh, well, I don't even care. Uh, what you're going to do about it <laughs> sort care. of approach <laughs> and and yeah removing PlayStation shovelware and, and easy platinums is a good thing it is a good thing but it's been a thing that could have been a good thing for many years but now it's something that directly impacts you it's, it's just so painfully transparently obvious that I mean GG's you've done it but don't try to pretend that there's probably some quotes in here uh there we go. It can negatively impact both the customer and partner experience. So what they're saying yeah. is they're looking after consumers and developers, not their bottom lines. Bollocks. Mm. Bollocks. I mean, just, just, just be honest and say what it is. You're looking after your profits. Okay, fine. We'll move, up, move along. Don't make a press release about it. Let's just move along anyway. Fuck. Mirt. Anyway, well, it's been too long on that. Yeehaw! Good morning. Morning, sideloaders hey. and jar farters. I'll read. Um, do you know this fucking this this Jarfar advert is just there? Like, I'm gonna open it back up again. She's just fucking look opening jars. Yeah, but but how long has that been on there? Like the people must still be clicking it for it to still be one of the trending articles. I think, I think the issue is like if I scroll back up to the top of the page, I think the issue is like you can see this bit here where it just says ad and there's no ad. I think it's because I don't have the cookies on 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 this website, right. so. It doesn't have anything to base my viewing stuff off, which means that the gamer have probably worked out that the Amaranth article is one of their top articles. So they just throw that out as their bespoke one until their cookie actually learns something from you and then goes, oh, Bibby likes to read retro articles about games that no one else but Bibby will play. Hashtag Bibby game. Uh, and then it'll start showing you articles and that. But but for me, because it can't read my cookies, it's going, hey, do you want to see someone fight in a jar? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, no, I don't. Hey, Chief, uh, I hope Danielle's here. She's going to be like, oh, my God. Oh, Graham, what are you reading? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. No, no, he doesn't want to see that. <laughs> He'd rather read articles on gamer girls drinking bathwater or giving away their bathwater or something. <laughs> by the way... It, uh, that's not on there as well. It's not just gamer girls, by the way. If you're interested in buying some bathwater, Roly Poly Potamus has got a good offer on. It's usually 100 quid for a jar of Roly Poly Potamus's bathwater. They're available on his merch store now for just the low price of 99.99. So do feel free to there get you it. Go. Go. Nice. Uh, it's, it's a real good advert, that, by the way. If anyone hasn't checked out Rolly Polly Potamus, it's, it's good. He's got a proper little sort of, like, like infomercial reason. <laughs> this is how we get it. And he just goes over and dips the jar in. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nice. Um, 
Nice. Anyway, I think my quickest 1K gamer score took 90 seconds. Uh, yeah, I usually I think finish. Mine was like four hours. I was going to say, I usually finish. Fight night. Seconds, but... Yeah, fight night. <laughs> uh, fight night uh, round three. It was yeah. like you go through the career mode and it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty much like, I don't know if you even have to win the, the, the title or whatever. It's just you just basically get into a match, win it. It's like, there's a thousand. All right, nice. Let's yeah, go. piece of piss. It was great. But that, they're, the, they're, the likes of, they're the trophies that I like to collect. It's ones that actually have a meaning and presence behind it. Complete the game and you get all the trophies. I hate the ones where it's like, get 700 kills with this particular weapon or be, stay stealth for 45 minutes or complete the game without healing. Like all of that stuff, I hate it. Yeah. Mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every console from the dawn of gaming has had cheap knockoffs and clones, and we usually needed to keep the platform alive between the main type releases. Uh, ac uh, accept the Atari ET game. Uh, accept. I went to uh, landfill, didn't it? Yeah, that was like the horrendous one that they, they put together in like minutes and was shit. Uh, anyone remember yeah. World Cup two thousand and six? One thousand gamer score. Still have nightmares. I don't. I don't. What. I mean, I never really looked at game scores. Uh, I don't even know if I played the World Cup 2006 game, actually. Maybe I didn't. I always remember the Euro 2004 game. That was outstanding. What a game that was. I'm trying to remember which one. There was one of them that was phenomenal. Maybe it was that. Maybe it was Euro 2004. 2010 was mint as well. Ah, uh, yeah, 2010 was good. That was a really good game. Good, 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 good. Um... Wrong spelling. Ah, oh, okay, I'll let you off. Fine this time. Okay, we're going to have to pick up the pace, so I'm going to put, put a pin in that article. If you missed it, PlayStation is removing easy platinums and easy scores, easy dubs, from uh, the marketplace be because they want to look after consumers and not because it's hurting their profits at all. 100%, definitely, that's that's why. Nice, nice. Moving ahead. <laughs> Chris Scullion at VGC says, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the UK's biggest physical launch of the year. It's also the second best UK launch in the history of Pokemon games. So Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sold more boxed copies in the UK during launch than any other game this year. That's according to GFK sales figures reported by GamesIndustry.biz, which suggests that the game sold more physical copies in its opening weekend than any other game has in the UK during the whole of 2022. The previous high was FIFA 20. But Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sales were reportedly up 4% compared to EA's football game, despite being on a single format. It's reported that this also makes Scarlet and Violet the second biggest Pokemon launch of all time in the UK. The only Pokemon game that sold more physical copies in its first weekend in the UK was Pokemon Sun and Moon in 2016, which released four months after the launch of the hugely uh, four months after the launch of the hugely popular mobile game pokemon go um uh, do you know i'm not going to go into all of the individual sales figures 52 percent, 42 percent. uh write the team theme tune sing the theme tune mm -hmm. it's good thoughts babe yeah I mean, I mean i asked you this yesterday as to whether or not this surprised you and you i think you said no uh um so i want to dig into that a little bit more no it was actually it it, it did and it didn't um it I, let me just change. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sales. I'll just have that as the uh, discussing now on screen because we won't keep it on too long. Um, it didn't. It didn't. It kind of overall, I feel like it did because Scarlet and Violet, um, for me, as someone that is hugely open to the idea of Pokemon, as long as you're talking about the first 151 Pokemon, after that, you mm -hmm. significantly drop off as time goes on for me. Um, Scarlet and Violet, Sword and Shield, Sun and Moon, X and Y, Up and Down, On and Off, whatever two words that go together that you're going to call your next release, I'm not bothered. It's it's it, it's the same stuff, but not as good, as in my opinion. Like, you look at the first 150 Pokemon, you've got, okay, this is, this is an orange dragon, Charizard, nice. And then by the time you got to, like, 800, they're like, okay, we've done pretty much everything, so let's do something that's, like, a shitter version. It's like it's like getting someone to draw Charizard from memory, but then put in extra squiggles. Let's put a weird yeah. triangle shape on its back. Let's put some six extra whiskers on it, just because. And then make one of those whiskers into a lightning bolt. Uh, okay, why? Well, okay. And so design-wise, quality-wise, the balancing of the Pokemon, I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered for all of that sort of stuff. So for me, it's a bit of a surprise uh, in that sort of sense. The biggest thing, though, for me is... is how it's the biggest sale pretty much ever. If we take away the fact that Sun and Moon was after Pokemon Go, that was Pokemon Go Summer. Anything with a Pokemon uh, 
sticker on, it would have sold a bajillion copies in that yeah. six, uh, six month, 12 month period. I played Pokemon Go every day for three years. Uh, so I can, I can vouch for the success of that game. Um, so, t- okay, Sun and Moon got, I've got a freebie. Scarlet and Violet, though, hitting that big, uh, that level or almost hitting that level is big for me. Not only because I'm, I'm back into the Pokemon fatigue element, but, but it's, it's the, the poor programming. I always, mm-hmm. I always jump in and say uh, the Switch just doesn't have the hardware capable to carry a Pokemon game. But I don't believe yeah. it's just that. And, I, and, and, and this is something that these, these are thoughts that I'm, I'm actually kind of echoing now from kind of funny. I mean, me and Bib do listen to the kind of funny uh, podcasts, but we try not to listen to their podcasts before we spoke about, uh, speak about our news because we don't want to cannibalize their ideas. But but I suppose it's kind of the same thing. And now I'm, I'm cannibalizing their thoughts in the fact that, that we've always thought, oh, maybe the Switch is just bad hardware for programming. The last Pokemon games that came out, Ar- Arceus, Arceus, whatever you want to call it, um, had issues with popping and draw distance the the pokemon games before that similar scarlet and violet has some really bad popping uh, some really bad draw distance there's some weird ass bugs where you've seen people like there was there was a journalist talking about um being able to go ver- uh, fly vertically up and down waterfalls which is something you're not sp- supposed to be able to do in the game apparently just being able to do that sort of shit having pokemon appear in the wild because rather than you just getting like bruh, 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 yeah. and then you're in this like battle scene you actually see the pokemon in the wild now nice until that pokemon is like phase stuck into a wall and you can't actually challenge it it's like okay great there's a pokemon that's there that i'm supposed to be able to yeah. fight against but it's in an actual bit of concrete great so it's buggy that the hardware isn't up to scratch but maybe it's not the hardware because there's other games like the bayonettas of the world that, that kind of funny we're referencing um and they were saying bayonettas and other things like that uh are games that actually look impressive that don't have as many issues but the fact that game freak have developed a pokemon game last year then arceus in january and then in november we've got scarlet and violet coming out as well is it just a case of they're just they're they're, talking about shovelware at playstation they are making good games to the point that they're making them so fast that they are becoming shovelware we are just shoveling this shit out as fast as we can Mm -hmm. and Game Freak are known for not releasing patches after launch either. So will this ever be fixed? But people don't care because it's the best selling yeah. Pokemon game ever outside of a Pokemon Go window. So so I'm not surprised that Pokemon continues to sell very well, particularly after uh, huge events in the Pokemon anime recently uh, in Japan. But I am surprised that people are still investing in, in games that just, just are more of the same, not really pushing the envelope and are buggy as fuck. What are your thoughts, babe? Yeah, I, I think I've, uh, there's definitely an element and a sprinkle of taking everything what you've just said there, and then you can definitely apply that to what I'm about to say as well. But when you have something like Pokemon that I think is genuinely the most profitable media in the world, I mean, we always talk about Grand Theft Auto, I was selling everything. But in terms of what Pokemon offers you, whether or not it's a film, whether or not it's TV, whether or not it's a video game, whether or not it's a mobile game. Like, I think if if it's not number one, it's definitely in the top five of most consumed media and most bought, like, gross value. Pokemon has to be up there. And the fact that we're talking... We love Pokemon. It, the first 151 is where we sit with Pokemon. It, it, that, that's, in my experience, that's where, that's where my experience is with that. I have played other games since... But however, I will never have the uh, the the affection to put out Pokemon than I do for the one first one fifty one because that's the era that I grew up in. So the fact that I'm still talking about that at thirty one years of age, when I think I probably started playing Pokemon at like eight, maybe, um, it, it just shows how many people and how many years and decades that they have put out Pokemon stuff for someone at thirty one years old, or in your case, uh, 35, 36. 36. I'll be 37 in 10 days on December the 3rd, by the way. There you go. Yeah, a little plug there. Um, I'm still talking about it well after the fact, but that's not taking into consideration something like my brother who's 16, my son who's nearly one, that will probably end up playing Pokemon games within the next five years. Like The install base that they have for Nintendo Switches out there is close to rivaling what, or if it's not already eclipsed, what the PlayStation 4 has out there. So take all of those elements together and you have the ability to be able to sell and break records when it comes to bringing out a brand new Pokemon game every single time. They have the install base. They have the, the 
us <laughs> in terms of human beings that have either grown up with this or have an interest in playing Pokemon. Like they just have everything going from it. It's not like selling a new Grand Theft Auto. My nearly one year old child will not be playing Grand Theft Auto for a long old while. But you'll be able to play Pokemon, and then the forty-year-olds will still be able to play Pokemon. But the inc the install base for Grand Theft Auto is obviously it's still massive, but it's not completely inclusive of children, whereas Pokemon is. So you have a large spectrum of people to be able to try and sell your game to, as well as the install base that's available for it. Factor in the price as well, which I think it was selling for like forty-five, fifty pound, which is still cheaper than a AAA seventy-pound game like Call of Duty that's out there. So you still have all of these factors that are absolutely in their favour, and it genuinely doesn't surprise me. The thing that does surprise me is the fact that they're still selling physical games. That's the one thing that I think physical is dying out. At some point, it will be obsolete. Not for someone like me. But in terms of the games going full digital, it does surprise me that the physical games are still flying off shelves. Exactly. I think I think the Switch, the fact the fact that this is only available on the Switch is probably the reason for that. Because Switch is you've got a feel out of all of the systems, obviously PC is and I'm stereotyping heavily here, PC is your hardcore gamers. Uh if 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 console is for, for your middling casual gamers, then Switch is for your super casual gamers. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There are some hardcore gamers that play on Switch and all, all, all that sort of stuff. But then there's one second console. Yeah, exactly. So th that means that if it's your second console in particular, you're less likely to want to spend 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 quid on buying a memory stick. So a lot of people are just going, I'll just buy the buy the buy the cartridge and I'll play it off the cartridge or buy the physical edition blah 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 so I think in my I could be completely wrong for the reasoning for me that's why I always think Switch sells more physically because people want to take it with them Switch is their on the yeah. go console and if you're having to play it digitally you've got to download it you've got to get your updates and whatever else I could just plug in a cartridge bosh there we go I mean, I could be wrong about... I've, I've not done any research into that. That's just what I look at it from me. I, I don't mind having cartridges with a Switch because I've got my Switch in a case that has little pockets for multiple cartridges or whatever. So <laughs> so that's the one console where I... If, if I had to choose one that I would choose a, phys, a physical copy for, it would be that. Obviously, PC would be last and then console would be in the middle. I could use, I could use physical... I mean... Put that PCs PM. first, mate. The back in the night is when they used to have big box PC games. Like they was elite, man. Like they always put so much time and effort into creating something that's visually exceptional Question. compared to everything else that's on the market. Does your PC have a drive on it? It does have it. It does. It Whoa! Does, yeah. I know. Absolute hardcore baby. I'd movies. buy one if it didn't. I genuinely buy one. Like uh, it was. Uh, Five months ago, when CEX Football Manager to uh, sorry Championship Manager 2007 was there, picked it up 50p, put it into my PC, and it actually worked. I thought it was I was just going to buy it and put it on my shelf, but it actually fucking works. Nice. Um, but for stuff like that, absolutely, I'd always buy it. It's the same reason why I'd buy a play a brand new PlayStation. PlayStation Six coming out with a disc drive. Fuck yeah, I'm paying for that. I'll pay the extra hundred quid if I yeah. need to to be able to have a disc drive. Same thing, same thing for me. I mean, it's it's the options. So I have there a PS5, which is digital. But downstairs, I have a PS5 with the disk drive just so that I have options. If if it could be for PR reasons. Not everyone has this problem, but PRs might be like, oh, do you want access to this game to make content for it? Yes, please. We only have printed discs. Very, 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 very rarely does that happen anymore. But occasionally you'd get it. Yeah, okay, I'll send you one of these red and white printed discs that you put in your console in a, in a silver see-through jewel case sort of yeah. thing. <laughs> um, Not for retail and yeah. massive letters on the front of it. Yeah, exactly. So I, I partly for that, but partly because I, I'm not I'm not big into buying games that will come in a pack with a statue of a guy holding up an axe or whatever. Statues are not really me. But if it comes with something cool and special, like the you can't see it up there, but there's a Doom helmet or whatever, that in it, yes. Or any of the fucking merchy stuff behind <laughs> me over there, that stuff, yes. If it's a statue, that's one of the few things I'm not bothered about. But give me a pan, give me a fucking helmet, give me a whatever. Yeah, that sort of stuff. So I'm not against buying some special edition content versions of games for that sort of stuff so that was part of the reason why it was one so partly pr and partly for myself to protect me future proofing and all that sort of stuff but anyway do you know what i'll put a pin in that sort of stuff uh yeah. big old tangent pokemon scarlet and violet has sold shit hot um mm -hmm. nice okay i well, am gonna... sheep's mentioned it there pokemon is the highest grossing ip on the planet at 108.5 billion 118. That's ridiculous 0. 118 sorry yeah yeah, big old monies, big old monies. I still have a few of those big boxes. Let's go, Link. Let's go. Yeah, uh, pictures. Oh, it didn't happen. Yep, yeah, get in the Discord. Let's go.
Um, exclamation mark Discord for anyone that wants to see pictures of Lakes boxes. Nice. Um, okay, we'll jump into this article. We do have to get off. We've got a call in 11 minutes. People yes, might have heard my... Um, easy tiger. We'd, you might have heard my <laughs> pop-up alert six minutes ago, as, or five minutes ago, as it popped up the, 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 my meeting reminder. But, but fine, it's fine. We'll jump into this article because we've, we've pushed this one back. We actually pushed the central update article back a few weeks ago. I don't know whether we actually got to it, so I'm making sure I'm covering this quickly. Steph Nunley Jackson at VG247 has this. Central update features over 200 bug fixes with a particular focus on stability and co-op. Volition has also added new features to the game to make your return to Santo Eliza smoother and more rewarding. So Volition has released a large update for Central that has a specific focus on stability, quality of life, co-op and gameplay issues, along with over 200 bugs. Uh, fixing over 200 bugs, should I say? It, they've not added it, you know, because that would be silly. Uh, the development team said <laughs> the update is just the start of its ongoing support for the game this year and beyond. The update increased stability in both single-player and co-op, fixed issues with some challenge rewards not being granted, visual issues with customization have been addressed, new quality of life features for vehicles, combat, UI and other parts of the game were added, and more. Volition said it wanted to pack in as many meaningful fixes and new features as it could into this first major update, so it focused on one larger patch rather than releasing a series of smaller ones. More community rest, uh, requested quality of life additions and new features are coming alongside further bug fixes that may be reported going forward. Boss, Bib, you've played some uh, Sensor on stream. Yes, I also played some over the weekend as well to jump back in. I want to try and finish this game. I think it does deserve to be played and completed, especially from someone like myself who does enjoy playing Saints Row games. More patches, just get me, just make sure it's a better experience. Like, the world is a little bit hollow. Like, everything that makes the Saints Row game is there, but the world itself is just not vibrant enough. So having things like patches coming in to potentially make it a little bit more vibrant, make the AI a little bit more da uh, a little bit less daft, would be a, would welcome changes. That's all we need to do. Like, get the co-op stuff in there as well so people can enjoy it without it glitching out. It's just quality of life stuff. Just make it a little bit more enjoyable for the consumer. And I'm, I can guarantee people who were giving it 40% might end up giving it 60, 65, maybe 70% which is a huge increase compared to what it was before. I still think this game is probably a 7 out of 10. It's not the best Saints Row that I've played, but it's definitely still playable. Like, I've yeah. not had any problems. Barring the two missions where he would just wouldn't let me continue until I ever had to kill myself to then go back to the restart in game just stuff. just for just just for yeah just just in case yeah you know. yeah yeah i mean this is this is my this is, this is my reload character do you know what i mean um they're playing a roguelike but yeah, it's definitely worth playing. It's definitely worth your time. It definitely could be better, and I think that's exactly what they're doing now. They're trying to make the game as playable as possible, and you can never grumble at stuff like that, whereas obviously some games end up getting put out and they never have any kind of um, quality of life uh, updates afterwards. Right, just just to point out, we got gifted um, copies of Saints Row, um, but just because that gifted our playing experience once again it was not spawn there is no ad so our yeah. experiences aren't biased and i think you can tell that from from baby we're talking about bugs in the game um and i'll tell you that some of the central games in history are some of the best games that you could ever play like the old original central games and if you like if you like mm -hmm. the comedy stuff in like the likes of three and four or stuff like that but agents of mayhem one of the worst games i've ever played <laughs> um but seeing this i still haven't played it seeing this central game watching you play i've seen a few other people stream it i definitely think it getting fours is harsh i do feel like it was that was harsh i do think you are right with your between six and eight seven is probably the perfect number for this sort of game and it's good to see that the content coming makes it at least worthy of of the scores yeah. it's it it should be getting some people seven's think, a good game yeah yeah exactly 100 people see seven as a failure yeah anything anything below eight people see as a failure and it's like no anything below three is a failure three to seven you could still have a really good time and 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 that's the thing like a lot of people will see the negatives like oh baby had to restart a couple of missions oh great that doesn't mean it's the shittiest game that's ever existed. My <laughs> my game of the year in like 2019 or whenever it came out was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I had to restart multiple missions on that, but it yeah. was still my game of the year despite that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Like if I lost my save like a couple of times, that then it probably would have gone down to a three, but I've not had any game-breaking issues with it i've just had some mission failures which the missions can last fucking five minutes you know what i mean i've lost five minutes of my time it's not the end of the world but if i would lost my save and i had to start the first 14 15 hours that would be a problem but it, it, it doesn't happen i haven't seen any reports that that is the case so it's not game breaking it's fine seven i'm happy with that nice 
Nice. Okay, well, we're going to jump ahead off that one into our final article because I can cover this one in about 60 seconds, if that. Uh, this is written by Chris Scullion at VGC, and it says, The company that revived the Xbox Duke is now bringing back the Xbox 360 controllers. If you don't know the Duke, that is the massive old-school Xbox controller, and they yep. made that work with the uh, Xbox One consoles, and will obviously work with the Xbox Series consoles. But off the back of that, they are now bringing this back on your screen. I'm not going to read the article. Uh, I'm going to give just give you the uh, gist of it. I've just scanned through it. Basically, it's the Xbox 360 controller replica for new Xbox consoles and PC. Like for like, with a couple of changes that have to be put in. Obviously, the main things are, I think it says here, because it's been, I oh know, we'll re read this bit. So because it's been created with the Xbox Series X and S in mind, the Xenon isn't a perfect facsimile of the Xbox 360 controller, since some modifications are required. The start and the back buttons have now been replaced with the menu and view buttons seen on a modern Xbox Series X and S controller, and a share button has also been included in the middle of the controller. So this is the old school controller with the back and start buttons. Uh, this is the new controller with the menu share and, and the like. So there you go. If you if you think, do you know what? You could take your Xbox Elite controllers and all that stuff and ram it right up your... I uh, couldn't find my uh, beat button in time. I know couldn't be asked questions yeah. and stuff. You get what I'm doing. Then you, you want to jump back to the Xbox 360. Well, do you know what? You will be able to. Nice. Nice. Absolutely. I, uh, oh, I want that, says Lake. Nice. <laughs> FYI, Xbox controllers are available for thirty four ninety nine at Curry's at the moment, and you can find a £5 uh, off voucher online too. Let's go. Same with um, uh, DualSense controllers as well. If you're after a PS5 yeah. controller, like the full range of those for the entire week have been like at least 20 quid off, which means they're around 39 99 ish uh, So, yeah, go check that. If anyone does see any bargains with it being Black Friday, like, not tomorrow day after uh, you'll start to get all of the deals wheeling out now over the next 72 plus hours so if anyone does see anything feel free to share those in our discord exclamation mark discord for now though we are gonna wrap things up uh we need to get off to get back on a call in four minutes so bib anything you want to add quickly uh yes uh the the guys have just started to come into the into the room downstairs so yeah we are going to be leaving but yeah thank you very much for joining us for today's episode of the scoop if you want to help share tomorrow's show and also friday's two ways you can do so first of all find us on social media you know the drill by now but all we need from you is a url plus your thoughts and opinions we will then give you our thoughts and opinions on the very next show which will be at what time from this studio tomorrow mr graham day uh that'll be at 10 a.m <laughs> We will see. For now, though, stick around. We will throw a raid. I don't know who it's going to be yet because I'm going to find someone quickly. Panic, panic, as we've got to get set for a meeting. Until next time. <laughs> stay positive. Stay positive.